Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 30th of September 2019 and the time has just gone 9.55 for the summer time. And it's been a fairly muted start to the European trading session. Um, markets are we're slightly a bit, a bit, a bit mixed. Um, we're looking at some European equity markets are slightly down, some are slightly higher, but overall it's a fairly kind of muted, um, a fairly kind of fairly quiet begin, beginning to the trading week. Uh, overnight, uh, we had some better than expected uh, manufacturing numbers out of China, uh, both the official uh, Chinese manufacturing PMI report and the Kaishin survey of Chinese manufacturing both come in better expected, although in the grand scheme of things they're not too healthy. Um, but the US China trade situation remains very much in focus. Um, looking at kind of towards the, looking back at, at some of the uh, developments you heard last week, um, on one hand, um, the US and China are due to meet uh, next week to, to continue on trade negotiations, which is a positive step forward. Uh, but at the same time, going in the, in, the, in the last few days, we heard from the Trump administration who are considering kind of putting more pressure uh, on US companies that are operating in China. Uh, they're, they're considering delisting um, Chinese companies that are listed on US exchanges. Uh, they're also contemplating um, stemming American uh, investment in China via pension funds. So it's the usual back and forth scenario in relation to the tra- in relation to the US China trade situation. Uh, on the political front, uh, they kind of you know they kind of. Uh, in- the impeachment inquiry in the President Trump is likely to hang around for a while, and while that continues to hang around, that's likely going to get a cap. Uh, so it's going to keep pressure on U.S. stocks, uh, or else it's going to cap any gains from those. Uh, on the political front, uh, in relation to Brexit, uh, over the weekend we've heard from Arlene Foster, the head of the Democratic Unionist Party, uh, said she said she would be open to the idea, or at least consider the idea, of a time limit on the backstop, and that's the sort of thing which could be enough wiggle room to potentially avoid a no-deal scenario and move the, the, the talks forward. But uh, as we found out in, in recent weeks, the back and forth we've seen in the in, in the US and China trade situation is also very similar to back and forth we've seen in relation to Brexit. So um, what, what, what can be seen as a step forward in the Brexit developments very, very, within, a matter of, within a matter of hours, uh, that can be, become quickly old news and the, and, and the dollar can be pushed in a different direction. Uh, but we've also seen very low volatility in currency markets as well. Um, I'll take a look now at the week ahead article. We'll take a look at the, at the week's major events, and then I'll, I'll run through uh, the major uh, the major uh, markets. So the week ahead article can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com and under insights under news analysis, you'll find the, uh, the majority of the articles by myself and the analysts produce are posted here. Um, I've talked about the um, I've talked about the, um, the PMI numbers coming out of China over the weekend. Uh, looking ahead to tomorrow, we have manufacturing PMI numbers, final reading um, from, from countries like France uh, and, and Germany. That's going to be a predicted importance because the flash reading for the German figures were the weakest uh, in a decade. Um, so really going to show you how bad the things are, are over in Germany in terms of manufacturing. Uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia have a meeting um, on the early hours of Tuesday morning, uh, UK time. Uh, and if you know if you're looking at the kind of <coughs> if you're looking at what, what the markets are pricing in, safety pricing in, uh, and interest rate cut is cutting rates down to 0.75 percent. On Thursday we have first half figures from Tesco here in the UK. Uh, we, on Wednesday we have third quarter figures from Ford Motor. Uh, on Thursday we have the um, global we have a, a series of P, uh, services PMI reports. This will be the uh, the final reading of the of the various different uh, service P- PMI readings. Keep an eye out for what was going on over in France and Germany. Uh, on Thursday, we have first half figures from Ted Baker, uh, the UK fashion house. On Thursday, we have third quarter figures from PepsiCo, and on Friday, the all important non farm payrolls from the US. Uh, it's arguably the most important economic update of the entire month. Um, keep an eye. It's, it's almost we've almost gotten to the point whereby the actual headline figure uh, and the unemployment rate is kind of taking a bit of a backseat to the to the to the wages component. Um, wages, it, you know, essentially, if, if American workers are in jobs and they continue to earn decent wages, you'd imagine that would be translated out into uh, higher spending. We're actually hosting a, uh, my colleague Michael Houston is hosting a live event on, on the day of non-farm payrolls. Feel free to sign up for that. Uh, if you go to our 
my website, cmcmarkets.com. Under insights and under learn, you'll see webinars and events. And you can be you can sign up for it here on the, on the October the fourth non farm payrolls live coverage. That will be uh, live coverage of the numbers itself and also a reaction to the numbers and talking about what potential kind of price action we could see on the back of the update. So, uh, as promised, I'll take a look now at some of the major markets, starting off the FTSE 100. See what's going on on the FTSE. Like I said, it's been a fairly muted start to European stocks this morning. Um, you can actually see very much here what I'm talking about. We've had a decent push higher in the, in the last few sessions. Um, and, but, but, but so far, it's been a fairly, fairly quiet day at the FTSE 100. Nonetheless, uh, the kind of recent upward trend that's been in play <coughs> since, apologies, since late August is still very much in play. And if you can press on higher from here, if you can hold above the 7,400 mark, we could be looking at retesting this zone here in around 7,470. Uh, any move to the downside could find some support from this, this line here which is the 100-day moving average, and that comes to play at 73.46. And even if you do have a fairly sizable uh, move to the downside, support could be found for this red line here, which is the 200-day moving average, and that comes to play at 72.33. And we can see on a few occasions that that metric acted fairly as a support. And if a metric is acting as support in the past, it makes it more likely it will do so in the future. But obviously, there are no guarantees. So I'll take a look now at what's going on over in Germany and the DAX. Similar situation whereby the um, the push hour we've seen in uh, in the German equity market since late since late August is is a uh, still very much intact. Fair enough, we did have a fairly sizable sell off uh, last week, but uh, but the market is, is is recovering, and if you continue to hold around this zone here around twelve thousand three hundred. We could look at retesting the recent highs here in around just well just shy just shy of 12,500. And should we take it? Should we take out that? Think of this zone here. We could then be looking at heading up towards the uh, highs of late July in around 12,600. And a move beyond that could take us up towards the highs of early July uh, in around 12,655. If we do see uh, a fairly decent uh, move move to the downside. We could see support come into play for this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and that comes to play at 12,040. And we can see on a few occasions that, that metric acted as support and resistance not too long ago. And like I said, the metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it will be so it'll be important in the future. And I'll take a look at the US markets, and to be fair, they're in better shape than their European counterparts. So starting off with the, the Dow Jones. So, very similar situation um, compared with the FTSE 100 and the DAX. The market has been pushing higher since, 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 since late August. Now, the highs that were achieved in mid-September failed to take out the all-time highs, but still the market is still very much in a upward trend. Uh, very much aware that at the last, um, the last, say, about 10 days or two weeks, the market has been, has been, has been kind of uh, edging lower. Uh, but it's still comfortably above its 50-day moving average here. And while we hold above that metric, it's likely that we could retest the recent highs. You could head back toward this zone here in around uh, 27,000. Uh, sorry, apologies. Yeah, in around 27,300. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 27,400. If we do see a bit of a continuation in the kind of dip, that we, kind of move, the, the negative move we see in the last couple of weeks, we could be looking heading back down toward this blue line here. The 50 moving average, and that comes to play at 26,551. Take a look now at what's going on on the S&P 500. As you can see, the chart looks fairly similar. Um, Mark has been pushing higher since late August. The highs mid-September failed to take out the highs, well, the all-time highs that were achieved. In late July, but nonetheless, the market is still in, in its upward trend. And if we continue to hold the ball, this this blue line here, the 50-day moving average at 2,946, it's likely that we could see the a continuation of the wider upward trend. So we could be looking at retesting 3,000 or heading north of 3,000 at 3,022. Um, if we do move to the downside, and we, um, we could be support could come back into play. In around this blue line here, the 50-day moving average at 2,946, and even if we do have a 
a fairly de decent move below that, we could be looking heading back down toward this, this zone here in around 2,900. We can see that region uh, not too long ago, at the beginning of the month, we saw some consolidation in that area in the past, um, and it's, 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 it makes it more likely that, that, that the metric could be important in the future. I take a look now at what's going on on the gold market. So we've talked about how broadly speaking, you know, the last few days equities have been strong, or well, equities have remained to be uh, in in, uh, in good shape. Now the gold market has been very strong, uh, in, in, um, very very strong recently. Uh, at the beginning of the month, it rallied up to a uh, this this area here was the highest level in, in six years, so give indication of how strong the gold market is. And broadly speaking, we have we kind of we haven't. Um, we haven't taken out the, uh, we could be broadly speaking, moving a bit to the downside, a bit sideways, and the highs that were achieved here in late September uh, failed to take out the highs of early September. So this is the kind of point you, you begin to wonder. After you had a six-year high, markets don't move in straight lines, so at some point you're going to have probably a decent enough correction. Now, notice here that we've had a move to the downside here, uh, and then we pushed higher, and then it moved lower again. So this could be the beginning um you know, this this could be the beginning of a, a near term downward near term correction, uh, whereby we have had the low you know the move here, the lower low, the lower high, and another lower low. So keep an eye out for the recent lows because we could be looking at printing a lower low. So if you take out if you take out um, the lows of uh, of mid September in around the kind of 1483, 14, 1482 14, region, if you take out uh, uh, take out those lows and we pop back, take out this low here of 1480. That could be a sign that we're in to lose further ground. So it could take us back down to where this is out here in around 15, sorry, apologies, 1453, 1453. Um, if you manage to get back above the 50 moving average, this blue line here, um, and we do look to retest the uh, the late September highs of it around this area here in at 14, so apologies, 15, 15, 35. We can then be looking at retesting uh, the, 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 the 60, the multi-year highs that were achieved at the beginning of the month in around 1557. <clears throat> I'll take a look now at what's going on in oil, starting off with Brent. So obviously we saw a lot of volatility in the oil market in recent weeks uh, between the, 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 drone, the drone strike on uh, Saudi Arabian oil production and oil, and, uh, and oil fields and oil sites. Uh, the subsequent announcement from Saudi Arabia that I think we started kind of getting back online sooner than expected. Uh, and then obviously the kind of US China trade spat has uh, probably let, you know, brought re kind of resurfaced concerns about the health of the global economy. And if the global economy is slowing down, chances are that the demand for oil will be softer too. Um, so, what are the kind of common bits about gaps on charts is that, that gaps are always filled. They're not always filled, but they are often filled. And we saw a fairly large gap being created here. Uh, on the back of the, uh, of the attack on the Saudi Arabian um, oil, oil sites. And notice how I'll, the vast majority of that gap has been refilled. I've kind of quite well, essentially got right, almost right back to the, that, that gap being filled. This might be the point whereby um, we could look to see the more kind of the wide, the more recent, uh, or broader trend from early August look to kind of push it higher. So we could look to kind of refill all this gap here, which is. Essentially, got essentially got right down to now. I think it hold above the recent lows in around kind of you know 60s but 81. We hold above that level and we get back above hold above the 50 moving average in at um, 61 spot 48. We could be looking kind of pushing on higher again. We could be looking heading back towards 63 or perhaps up the up the up towards the 30 moving average at 64 spot 51. If on the other hand, if you continue with the kind of recent downward trend that we've been in for basically two weeks, you could be looking heading back down toward the kind of psychologically important 60 bucks per barrel. And if you go below that, we could then be looking heading back down towards uh, the early August lows of inner, you know, inner sub $57 per barrel on Brent. <clears throat> Excuse me. Very similar situation here on uh, on WTI. We can see here that we had a large gap was created on the, on the charts on the back of the uh, the Saudi, the all the, the attack in Saudi Arabia. We can see here that the uh, that the gap has been fully filled. So we're not going to have a decision point. <clears throat> Is this the point whereby the recent downward trend that's been in place continues? 
And uh, if we do see a, 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 a lot of break below the recent low here, do we head back down towards the kind of 54 zone, potentially down, down towards 53? Or is the point whereby now that, that the gap has been filled, the kind of more broad, the more recent, the slightly wider bullish trend from uh, early August, this line, this 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 uh, trend here we're talking about, if should that continue? And if we do look the press and higher from here, we could be looking heading back up towards 58. And then beyond that, we could be looking at talking about heading back and forth this zone here in, in, a, in a 59 spot 53. Coming up now on the currency markets, starting off with Euro dollar. <coughs> so we saw further pressure on the Euro versus the, on the greenback on finally just gone. So look at, look at the, um, the kind of solid downward trend that we've been in. Um, the lows that we that we saw uh, on Friday really kind of sums up the weakness uh, in the euro versus the US dollar. It is worth pointing out that that uh, we, we did see some decent support from this zone here in around one spot 0926. Now the market did trade below it on Friday, but it did manage to close above it. Uh, but still, look at this downward trend here. So the downward trend is not very much in play. And if the wider downward trend, if the market manages to turn over itself yet again. We could be heading back down towards 109 or possibly even down towards 108. If we do have a bounce back in, uh, in Euro dollar, we could be heading back towards this region here, just north of 110, in a kind of a 110, round 24. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading back towards this blue line here, the 50 moving average. We can see how it acted as resistance on a couple of occasions uh, in early August, so the possibility it might act as resistance um, in the near term. And that, that comes into play in around 1 spot 10, 75 ish. Uh, coming up next, and lastly, the British pound versus the US dollar. So pound dollar, obviously, the, the, you know, the much wider trend has been very much to the downside, but we saw a fairly decent bounce back and snap back uh, in, uh, at, at the beginning of the month. Now, the market did manage to press on higher, well up beyond the 50-day moving average here, this blue line here. But notice how the highs of late September failed to take out the... Uh, the 126 so we have seen a bit, a bit of the ground being given back now this is kind of the point that we can ask ourselves is this the point where the market tried to get above 126 and it's going to fail and it's going to turn lower and we're going to head back to uh, back down and retest the recent lows or is this the point whereby we've had a snap back here we've only we've, we've given back this negative move here is a as only is is a, essentially a, a correction in the, in the the move that we saw from early September until um, until kind of late September, if you could hold above this blue line here at the 50 moving average in at one spot 22.62, we could look to kind of retest 124, head back up towards the late September late September highs and look to target 126. If on the other hand we do fall back below the 50 moving average and if we do have a decent break below 122. We could then be looking at retesting the recent lows. You could be heading back down towards 120 or even down as the early August low, or apologies, early September low in around one spot 1958. Uh, before I go, um, if you have any comments to make in this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.